Hello. Today I'm going to walk you through a code pattern where we'll do clickstream analysis using IBM DB2 Event Store. This is a code pattern that's available in public GitHub at github.com slash IBM slash DB2 Event Store clickstream. So go ahead and clone the repo. You'll get two notebooks, one that we're going to use to ingest the data into Event Store and one that we'll use to pull the data out and analyze the data. Now in these notebooks, we'll be using the Scala language to access the Event Store via the Event Store API, which is also available in other languages. But we'll use Scala, and then we'll also use Spark SQL. To create the charts, we'll use Brunel. Brunel visualization is a really interesting language that lets you specify charts and tie them together. So um, this will be a good example for using notebooks with Scala and Brunel. As we look at the steps, this is really very easy to run. I'll be able to walk you through pretty much the whole thing in this video. Um, first you need to install Event Store Developer Edition. I'm not going to walk you through that, but you set that up. You'll have the Event Store and you'll have a notebook environment. Then you clone the repo so that you have the files. This is the Event Store Developer Edition, so I'm going to go here and I'll create the notebooks and add the assets. So first you click on Add Data Assets, browse to your clone repo, and in the data directory. So here in the data directory I've got one CSV file, clickstreamdata.csv. So I'm going to open that, and what that does is it puts the file in my container where I'm running the notebooks. So this is containerized Jupyter environment. Next I'm going to create the notebooks. We'll have two of them. So again, I'll use from file because I cloned the repo. And then I'll just choose the file. In my cloned repo, this is in the notebooks directory. So I just went up and into notebooks and I'll start with the ingest one. So I'll open that and I need to give it a name. We'll call it ingest clickstream events. And create notebook. You notice in the upper right hand corner Apache Tori Scala. So this is a Scala notebook. Um, the first thing we have to do is see the IP address is set to all X's. I'm going to paste my IP address in there. That's where the event store is running, so the notebook needs to be able to connect to it. Now I'm going to try to do a run all, but I've actually ran this before, so I'm going to hit an error. And I'll show you that, because you might do the same thing. So we're trying to create a table, but the table already exists from a previous run. So here I just uncommented the part where we drop it, so I can drop the table and then create a fresh one. Um, if you want, you can skip this cell later. Now if I do a run all, I'm going to have a similar problem with the database. And here you'll see the cell where we create the database. Um, with the developer edition, you only get one database. So we have a, a cell here, kind of like the table one, where I like to make it drop the database and then create a new one. So I'm wiping out my test DB and recreating it every time. So again, you can use comments or you know, skip those cells completely once you're set up. So now if I run all, I'll be able to run this whole thing top to bottom. So let me scroll back up to the top. So we set up our connection and we're importing the packages we need. We dropped the database and created a new one, so we're starting fresh. Define the schema, creating the table. And here you can see we have our Spark session. That one long line there is pulling the CSV file in from the assets directory, and we're getting it as a data frame. We do a show just to take a peek at the data that's in there. But to load it, you see the bottom cell. We're just going to iterate over that data frame and do a batch insert into Event Store. And we've ingested the data, so now we have data in our Event Store. 
Now I'll add my Analyze Notebook. So again, I'll click on From File. I have to give it a name, so Analyze Clickstream Events. And then I will hit the Choose File button to grab that Analyze Clickstream Events Notebook out of my Notebooks directory. Click on Create Notebook. And again, I'll have these X's where I need to put my IP address in there. And then I can connect to event stream. So I'm just going to do cell run all. Now I'll just scroll back up to the top and let's see what we get. So we connected to event store with that IP address. Notice the add jar. It's downloading the Brunel uh, jar. So we can use Brunel with, a, with the Spark kernel. We have to import our Scala packages, connect to our event store. Here we're loading the data, so once we load the data in, we're, we get to start working with data frames. If you're going to use Jupyter Notebooks in any language, there's a good chance you're working with data frames. Um, so we can use the show command to see what's in the data frames. Now, we're working with these data frames and we're doing some calculation. Like this first one, we're calculating time spent on a page. Um, so now we have a little bit more information that we can use in our charts. And then we start doing aggregation. So here you can see we've got the URLs and the count of the page hits and the total time the user spent on the page. But then we start aggregating it. So we'll aggregate it by, by the page. We'll aggregate it by the product line, by the product, and by the feature. So here you can see we've got a bunch of different uh, Spark SQL queries. So we'll use each of them. We'll have these different aggregations in our data frames. And that show command is very handy just to take a look at what's in there. But what we really want to get to is the Brunel charts. So here you see Brunel. Now it's a little bit of cell magic to say we're using Brunel here. And with the data, we can say what data we're pulling in. Um, if you look at this one, we've actually got four charts here. And one thing that's kind of interesting, I think, with Brunel is the way you can say, put it at 0, 0, 50, 50. So it's using the percentages. So 0 to 50, that's that upper left-hand quadrant. So we put the first bar chart from 0, 0, the top corner, to 50, 50, which is the middle of our, our view space. And we give it a, we, we, we tell it what the x and y axis is going to be. We use uh, tooltips. In this case, the hashtag all is um, a handy way to build the tooltip. We can say it's colored by product line. We don't need legends. Um, but we can give it different names for the axis, like this is called page views instead of page hits. Now we specify the sort for page hits, and if you look at the other charts, the 0, 50, 50, 100 position, that's the lower left quadrant. So I put the same chart right below the other one, and I kept the same sort so that I'm still sorting it by page hits. So the, um, those product lines match up, the colors match up, uh, but this time I'm showing total time spent. So what kind of jumps out here is video games, you can see they spend more time on those pages, even though it's not the most popular in terms of hits. It um, sort of stands out as time spent. Now if we scroll down, we'll see more examples of the tree maps and the wiring. So the two quadrants on the right, I use tree maps. It seems like an interesting way to show the weight of these metrics um, by the area. And the wiring is, I call it wiring, when you, you click on that bar, it highlights over to the right. So here again, I went further down. This is by feature. And the bar chart uses an interaction select. So when I select one of those bars, the, um, the pie chart has opacity selection. So I click on the bar, and it shows up on the pie chart. And for it to be that easy to do that kind of wiring is a pretty nice feature, I think. And also the tree maps certainly are an interesting way to present data. For the last part of the notebook, we want to look at a specific user. So this is where you want to see what this user was doing 
for targeted ad campaigns or to help a support person. So we've calculated some extra information here, like I added the day of the week, so you can see whether it's Friday or Wednesday. And you see the data shows up in this chart, a stacked bar, again with wiring. You can see on which day what product line that customer was looking at. So here you can see the yellow is smartphones, and as you click on a bar chart, you can see not only the day, but also the product line the person was looking at. And I've played around with the tooltip a little bit to show you can use HTML things like italics and bold and underline. So there we see the day of the week, the day of the month, the product and the product line. So that about does it. You can see we've done some pretty power, powerful things with the graphics with Brunel. We built it with Spark SQL and Scala, so we have a lot of ability there. Jupyter Notebooks are a great way to present what we want to do. And it's all built on top of the DB2 event store. So we have a good scalable way of handling uh, event streams.